99% of all auto term diesel heater warranty claims are in fact installation error. These can be simple, simple errors that just do not conform with the manufacturer's instructions. Follow this diesel heater installation on my Volkswagen Transporter T6. I will show you the do's and the don'ts, and hopefully we will create the perfect installation. I don't know if you can see this, but this here is Adam from Camper Vans on the Frith, and he is putting the Transport T6 on a two post lift. Yes, today we are not on the driveway. This can be done on the driveway, and I've done many on the driveway before. It's not as much fun on the driveway, and the camera angles do suffer. So today I am here at Camper Vans on the Frith. We have a roof and a ramp is best for me and it's best for you. Let's take it away. Let's talk location of the heater. There are a few common places that people are gonna wanna put a diesel heater in the T6. One, and the most popular, is actually on the underside of the van, making use of this plate. I'll put a bit of B-roll over the top to show you exactly where this slots in. A Couple of rib nuts into the chassis member and everything is ready to roll and ready to hold your diesel heater. Now, Auto term do say that putting a diesel heater under the van is perfectly acceptable, except they would recommend that you put the diesel heater inside. This is from Auto term, so they are not going to penalize you if you do, in fact, install it on the outside of the van. But making use of this, this is a turret plate. It has a turret of about 127 mil. We will be drilling 130 mil hole right in the cargo floor. This will slot down. Now what this allows is any discrepancy in the floor. So most cargo floors are corrugated like this, or you may have insulated the floor and then put an extra layer of timber down. This will take away all of those discrepancies and then on the underside, seal between the hole that we've drilled and that turret. And that will basically make it sealed from the inside to outside. The third option is to use a box, once again, supplied by Autoterm. This is in fact for the 4E, that's why it's so much larger. But once again, this will just offer the diesel heater, if installed outside, a bit more protection. It's not waterproof, it does have gaps in it, but it will stop any kind of rocks jumping up and hitting it, and it is in fact splash proof. So unless you are being submersed in water, this would offer an extra bit of protection. Adam here is removing the driver's seat as we speak. I am not going to show every single nut and bolt. The driver's seat is four bolts, one in each corner. If I showed every single nut and bolt during this process, the video would be so long and people's retention would slip away. If there is a nut and bolt that is hard to get to and you need to knock on the door three times and hop on one leg for it to come out, I will show it. But if I tell you, remove the under tray, it's six bolts and three clips, go ahead and find them clips. If there's something difficult or strange about the situation, I will explain further. So the seat is out and we are now going to remove the under trays from both sides of the vehicle. We have an under tray this side and we also have an under tray this side. This side will be hiding the diesel tank, which does need to be dropped if you are installing the diesel line directly into the diesel tank, which we will be doing because I'm suggesting that is the best way. Not gonna show you every single bolt. Take a good look under there. You will see all kinds of little bolts that need to be taken out. Remove all of the plastics that are gonna be in your way. You're gonna find a couple of these little things. If you can, try and spin them off like you're spinning a nut off. If you can't, well, just pull like hell. As I said before, we are putting the diesel heater under the seat, which is about there. We are going to use that grommet as a bit of a starting point, as a bit of a datum to get our bearings. This turret plate will go top side, leaving all of the gubbins pointing down through here, and I'll talk you through where they go. Orientation of the diesel heater. Now, this is one of those vital things. If you get this wrong, you could be in trouble. If you are making use of one of these prefabricated brackets from Autoterm, you can't get it wrong. If you're installing it on one of these, you put that on, it will only go one way. If you are fabricating something yourself or building this into something totally different, it can go on its side like this. The wires must be facing up. It's as simple as that. The wires must be facing up or you can in fact install it with all of the exhaust pipes facing down. It cannot be installed facing up or with the wires facing down. It's as simple as that. Two orientations wires facing up, exhaust pipe facing down. So this is the kit laid out. And at first, it's pretty overwhelming. There is a lot of baggies, wires, pipe, air pipes, exhaust. But 
What I absolutely love about Autoterm is every single bag is labelled for its exact purpose. So for example, this is called mounting kit of fuel system. This is called mounting kit of exhaust. This is called the air intake mounting kit. So this is just two Jubilee clips. You haven't got a cipher through all of the different size Jubilee clips and screws and washers. Once you have the unit mounted, you just chip away at each job, taking the exhaust and its relevant bag and get it done. So what we've actually done here is we drilled a hole from below, a little pilot hole, up through, it's just there. Looking below, that was our perfect location. Then we've come top side to double check that everything's okay. To make sure that we're not gonna hit anything vital, to make sure that the position is okay. The diesel heater is gonna fit in its location. That for us there looks like perfect location. The idea of the turret guys, once again, you see how uneven this floor section is. That plate is gonna sit on the highest point, but the fact that the turret is, I believe 38 mil deep, that will take all of the plumbing and gubbins down through, keeping it totally sealed from the cab. So you can get different depths of these as well. From Auto Term Planar, you can get deeper ones. So if you've got a subfloor and it's going through insulation, like a nine mil ply and 25 mil insulation, and then through the floor, you can get a deeper one. But you do need to specify when you order how deep you want it. But this is perfect for this one. Now that we sorted the location of the diesel heater and the turret plates position, we're gonna get that drilled out. We'll do the usual. Whenever you're drilling your van, you drill your hole, you deburr, file, clean the edges, and then protect them with some kind of primer or paint. Hammerite's pretty good. And if you need to speed up that curing process of said paint, you can use a hairdryer or a hot air gun, whatever you need, but make sure you do not leave edges that are unprotected. We have the rare opportunity of being able to build this out of place. We've already mounted it to the turret, four bolts in each corner. Just so you know, a way of quickly remembering the exhaust is the pipe that is furthest away from the fuel line. So this is our fuel intake and that is going to be fitted just like we fitted on the fuel tank with the little piece of rubber, then the plastic hose, and this is the air intake. Every item, so the air intake, has a bag of fixings with it. It will have a bag with the correct size Jubilee clip in it and also a bracket to mount it to the vehicle. Everything now that needed to be connected to the heater itself was done, once again, out of place because it's quite challenging to get to. It's not impossible, but because we've got the space, this is how we're gonna do it. The plug is fitted to the fuel line power. We've got the first Jubilee clip tightened for the fuel line itself, the diesel fuel line. Air intake is already fitted. Everything's nice and snug. We're going to pop this down from above and then take care of locating where these are going to go. Slowly, hang on. Yeah. Oh, that is so good. So this is obviously one of those silly little jobs that is so much easier with two people. So we're opting for a nut and bolt, stainless steel. You could rivet this. I mean, you could self tap it. You could go all out and use a riv nut and a bolt. But because there is two of us, can you apply pressure to that one? We can, in fact, he says, oh, you bugger. Happy? So that is our diesel heater fixed to the van. All of the appropriate tubes coming down, affixing in each corner. Now what we're gonna do is arrange the air intake, the exhaust and its muffler, also the fuel line with the fuel pump. So in fact, I am smoothing this off, not because we care what it looks like. This is more about the practicality of sealing the gap. While I don't want it to look horrible, I don't really care for what it looks like. So at any point, just reach around. It's in a very awkward situation, in a very awkward position. In this section, we are going to look at the diesel tank. We are gonna make use of the vehicle's diesel tank to fuel our diesel heater. I think this is the best option. We start by removing the filler cap, the filler nozzle, a few bolts, a few torques. There's one, two, three torques head in the filler cap housing. There's actually a breather line that goes from said housing down the same channel. They, there it is there. And then I believe once again, there are some 10 mil bolts. Basically, you're relieving anything that is holding those fillers to your vehicle. 
So the AdBlue tank doesn't have to be removed. The AdBlue pipe on AdBlue vehicles is totally in the way when we try to remove the diesel filler tube that passes through the same part of the vehicle, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So that's the only part we're actually removing is the filler neck to the AdBlue because it's in the way. So because I'm an absolute legend, I've almost got a full tank of AdBlue. I've done that as a massive favor to Adam here. Um, so that is a clip. We are going to remove the AdBlue. There's gonna be some in there. You are gonna get some splash. Okay. Yeah, so two little push buttons. Excellent. It's like a standard fuel pipe fitting. So VW have made it quite easy actually. You can disconnect the electrical system, the electrical parts for the sender unit here rather than trying to do it on top of the tank. You've also got the two fuel feeds, your fuel feed and your fuel return, which you can disconnect. So unplug that. This will wiggle off here, just held on like that. And then you've got to just undo these, same as the Apple pipes. You squeeze and push and then pull them apart. When you're removing them, can they be installed incorrectly back again? They can't, can they? Because they're male and female, female and male. Color coded as well. So in theory not. Excellent. So we will get a bit of fuel. This is regardless of how much fuel you've actually got in the tank. If you can do this job with as little in the fuel tank as possible, just because it's heavy bringing it down, you are going to get a little bit of fuel from the lines come through. You are not empty in your diesel tank. I'm in control of something. Up we go. By far the most daunting part of a diesel heater install is tapping into the fuel line. On the transporter, there is actually a perfect location in the fuel sender itself. We're gonna get that out and we're gonna show you that. Failing that, if you didn't want to interfere with the fuel sender, you can choose any flat location where you know that it's not going to clash with the top side of the van. And I'll show you that now. This is the fuel line that's going to serve your diesel heater with diesel. If you weren't going to use the fuel sender, and I'm gonna show you option two in a minute, what you could do on any flat surface of the diesel tank, like I explained before, you could drill a 16 mil hole. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna cut this to length, do not cut it so that it touches the bottom of your tank because your diesel heater could then, in fact, allow your vehicle to run out of diesel. What I would do is do a bit of a dip test and then maybe take two inches off the bottom, whatever you feel. Do not put this right to the bottom of the tank. Now, the reason you drill a 16 mil hole is because this 15 to 16 mil washer, OD, replaces the bit of plastic that you, in fact, drill out. So, this is almost like a wobble washer. You drill your hole, you'll then angle this like that on the way down. That will fall through your hole and act as a back plate, your 16 mil washer. This then will sit in the cross section of the fuel tank that you've drilled out. And then fairly simple, rubber, steel washer from above, followed by the nut. And you clamp that down. So here, exactly here, would be the cross section of your fuel tank. But we're not gonna do that. We are going to tap in to the fuel sender. Before you take the sender out, and before you disconnect the pipes, take a quick photo of how it is and how it all goes because these will potentially connect up the wrong way. And also the sender, once you take it out, which we will show you, it will turn and you can put it in a different position. So take a photo, and you remember exactly how it goes back. There's lots of different types of these. This is what you need to get the sender out. You can try knocking it out with a pair of screwdrivers and a hammer, but this is the better tool. This was a cheap Amazon tool. As I said, there are better ones. Do you think there'll be a link in the description? Uh, we can put a link to one, definitely, yeah. You'll probably maybe put a link to a better one than this. <laughs> <laughs> but this is adequate. Uh, you might need somebody else to hold the tank whilst you do it, but this, this is the tool you need. Uh, what I will say is this shroud here is in fact plastic. And that's why hitting it with a hammer and screwdriver isn't going to do you any favours. On the Sprinter, there is a big metal ring, which in fact, pretty much the only way I found to do that was with a hammer and screwdriver. Don't be hitting this because it's just going to end in tears. Yeah, I'm, I'm applying pressure down so that it doesn't slip off, he says. Oh yeah. Absolutely beautiful. If I was going to make a bet, I'm going to suggest that Adam's going to get a nice clean bucket for us to lift this out 
and put it into. We don't want any dirt, particles, dust, bits of rubbish in our fuel whatsoever. As you just saw, everything had a lovely blowout. So anything loose, don't get me wrong, this is filthy, but none of this is loose material. Take the seal with it. Look at all that liquid gold. So from the back of the nut here, so the stand pipe itself is gonna be 210 mil. We're gonna cut that with a grinder with a nice sharp blade on it and then make sure we deburr it, get rid of any kind of filings that are gonna shape the end of that because we want it nice and clear to suck in as much fuel as possible. It's originally cut at a 45 degree angle, so we are gonna replicate that. Probably a very valid good reason. Fuel sender, there is a location. I mean, mine had a yellow sticker on it here because you can get diesel heaters fitted from factory, but that is the location where factory fuel line would be. We're using a step drill here. If you put an eight and a half mil drill bit through, sometimes it can snag, cause all kinds of damage. Our new fuel line that's gonna serve our diesel tank is just sat there ready to pick up straight out the top and off to our heater. Because it is a factory fit option, VW provide a clip for the fuel pipe to go into. So this little clip here, which is quite tight, is sufficient to oh, wow. the fuel pipe. So like I said before about drilling that hole there, as a factory option, that would come drilled, pre-installed and make use of this clip. We're gonna get the fuel line out of the way of the fuel tank, fit all of this back into its position. The only thing that should have changed is the fact that we've got a fuel line poking out the side. It takes a wiggle and a jiggle, but as long as you put things back in the same sequence you took them away, it will be fine. Our diesel line from our new connection runs around this tank here, and what we are doing is going over the heat shield, over to this side. You wanna cross over the exhaust, the cooler side of the heat shield, if that makes any sense at all. And what we're hoping to do, our under tray is going to sit in here like this, and that creates a void. We are opting for putting the fuel pump within that void, out of the way of any debris that's gonna come up from the road. It just seems like the ideal position to fit our pump. Another thing we put together outside of the van is the fuel pump. As standard now, with all auto term planar diesel heaters, you will get the silent full disclosure. I don't believe it's totally silent, but it's a lot quieter than everything else that's out there. Now, I have been asked in the past, can I buy an Amazon special fuel pump and fit it to my auto term diesel heater? The answer is no, don't do that. You can buy these separately. So if you have an auto term diesel heater already fitted in your van and your existing fuel pump is doing your head in, because they can click, you can buy these individually. Now, two things to probably mention is there is an arrow, there is a direction. The fuel is going to be pushed towards the plug. And the reason I'm stressing that is because one of the first things you're gonna do is put the rubber anti-vibration bracket Ah, that secures it over the top and you're gonna hide that arrow. So the plug is what faces forward. The other thing to mention is the reason I keep holding it like that is because that is the angle you wanna fit it. You probably already know this. You're gonna run uphill at about 30 degrees. Just make sure this is running uphill. This is the diesel pump fitted, correct direction, electrical connection in, fuel in, fuel out, get a few cable ties in the baggie, so once you've chosen a location, there's plenty enough holes and things to click to. Simply use the cable tie, tie it up out the way of any moving parts. That is pretty much the perfect installation. As long as you don't kink this, you pretty much can't get this wrong. We have broken the back of this diesel heater install. I will show you the rest. We have the air intake, we have the exhaust, we have a few electrical connections to show you. But if you have got this far and you have actually decided that doing your own diesel heater install is a little bit out of your comfort zone, hit the link below. Camper vans on the thrift. We are here just on the edge of the Peak District. If you feel you want a diesel heater and this is the route that you would like to go down, but you don't feel that this is necessarily within your parameters once again hit the link below so we have been plowing on like i said in a bid not to show you every single nut and bolt because that would be boring but here it is this guys is the air intake bolted it just above the diesel pump few bolts self tappers straight into the chassis rail here this is facing to the rear 
of the vehicle. A common mistake when it comes to the air intake, if you cannot position your air intake in such a fashion that it is continuously running down from your diesel heater, you may require to drill a small hole in it. Any moisture that either builds up or kicks up, or if you drove through a puddle and filled it up with moisture, water, rainwater, anything like that, it needs to get away. I'm quite lucky because our diesel heater starts so high that it naturally runs downhill continuously. Once again, if you cannot have it continuously running downhill, drill a small pilot hole in there and it will allow the water to drip out. And here is our exhaust line. So our exhaust comes with this padded heat shield just to help you when it comes to routing it. We don't like to assume that this is 100%. So it's not near any plastic. There was a tiny little bit of the under tray that we needed to trim away. It can touch the metal heat shield because that's what it's there for. Don't let this touch anything plastic or rubber and definitely not put this anywhere near your diesel line. That is the worst scenario that your diesel fuel line could be touching against that hot exhaust, melt through it, and you would have diesel absolutely everywhere. Things to note with the exhaust, you have this inline muffler. This is not directional. It doesn't matter which way round you orientate this. You have a Jubilee style clip either side of it. It has a grill on the end of it here, just to pretty things up and to stop larger items going inside it. When it comes to cutting your exhaust, what we're gonna do is cut a little slot. This is just a rough cut, by the way, just to show you guys. And what that does is it allows you to spread it over the item you're fitting it to, and then you clamp it down with the said clamps. It's a common misconception that the exhaust pipe should be in the total opposite direction to the air intake. That is totally unnecessary. And in fact, it's against manufacturer's opinion. You may feel that it is best to have your air intake poking out over that side of the van and your exhaust pipe poking over that side of the van because they're gonna be miles away from each other and they are never going to share that combustion air. Well, in fact, the exhaust outlet only needs to be 200 millimeters away from your air intake. If you can make that 400 mil, that's absolutely fine, but do not point them in totally opposite directions. Do not have the air intake facing forward because that will encourage moisture to get inside the diesel heater. And this is one of the problems when it comes to warranty claims, finding moisture inside the diesel heater. That will eat the inside of your heater from back to front. So as I've just showed you guys, I have the air intake here facing to the rear of the vehicle and I have my exhaust outlet facing same direction, and that is about 400 mil away from each other, so that couldn't be any better. Now, I genuinely love the Autoterm diesel heater product in its totality. I love everything about it. Moving on to the electrical side is where Autoterm kind of let me down a little bit. You have three lots of wiring. One is the connection from the diesel heater to the diesel pump. That's already in place. Now that wire is about 300 meters long. It doesn't need to be that long. I've never ever seen an installation where the distance between the diesel heater and the diesel pump is as far away as the lead that they supply. But that's fair enough. You can always take away, which is absolutely fine. And that's what Adam's doing now. He is under there, you don't need to see it, but he is shortening the wire to the diesel pump, it's already connected to the diesel pump. The bit that comes up through is gonna splice it and rejoin it, taking away probably about four meters of wire because it just bunches up everywhere and it looks horrible. You've basically got that under the seat in the van. And this cable that I just shook at you is the power cable. You could say, well, if my battery supply was a fair distance away from the diesel heater, I may need all of this. So that's fair enough. Once again, you could take some of that away. And then you've got the cable that serves the digital remote. The one cable that you probably want to be about four meters long, because the chances are you want your remote buttons to be quite a fair distance away from your diesel heater itself, is about a meter and a half long. They know that this product is too short because as an optional extra, you can buy a 2.6 meter extension and a seven meter extension. Let me down a little bit. You know this is too short. Make that one longer and the other one's shorter. But this power supply cable does have an inline fuse, which is absolutely great because for the time being, I am going to just wire this straight into the back of the Clayton LPS2 with these two ring terminals. So inline fuse, like I said, the LPS2 may 
be a permanent fixture in the van, but it's definitely not going to be in the exact location. So for the time being, I am going to keep all of this because I don't know exactly where my final battery location is going to be. So the power cable is connected to the Clayton that's just sat under there. Like I say, this has got far too much than I need, but I'm going to keep it for the moment. For the time being, we're going to bring that through and that will simply one cable left to do, and that is the data cable. It's just a four pin plug. You cannot get that wrong. But once this is installed, you get that much. It may be enough at a push to get to where I want it to go. I won't know yet. Not concerned for the time being. We're just going to add the remote straight to the end of this so we can get the heater up and running and tested. We have power. That's the temperature at the remote. So if I put that next to the heater, it would turn itself off. What I wanted to catch, so that is now, I'm saying, based on the fact that that's at 95 watts, I'm saying that is heating the glow plug. So the pump is ticking away nicely. The fans are running. At this stage, do not be surprised if you see fault 13 flash up on your remote control. You are drawing diesel through for the first time. It runs, it realizes it hasn't quite got the diesel yet, goes into fault mode, you reset it and it starts again. Once the unit starts to get diesel, it will run. As soon as you start to feel heat, you know you're there. You could expedite this by maybe siphoning, sucking on that diesel line, but that leaves a bad taste in your mouth, literally. We're gonna let that run now for five minutes, keep resetting it as many times as we need to, and I'll catch up with you in a minute. The diesel heater is running and you can probably tell from my flushed cheeks from being inside, it's kicking out heat absolutely cracking this has been a dream from start to finish i'm going to take the mic a little bit closer now while that doesn't sound like a loud noise one o'clock in the morning that is going to multiply by 10 you're going to think that you can hear that so this is what i was saying before even the silent diesel pump isn't truly silent so just bear that in mind so don't be surprised if it does click but this install is finished now. It's absolutely cracking. The diesel heater on my installation will simply take its air intake because the front of the seat box is totally open. That is how it's going to suck in that recirculated warm air. This is where my warm air enters my vehicle. A couple of inches of hose go from the diesel heater into one of the vents, which is supplied with the small van kit. I believe it's called a transporter kit, in fact. Another common mistake that people make is they believe that that outlet hose on the heat output requires a jubilee clip it doesn't even if the unit is installed externally do not put a jubilee clip around either the air intake or the hot air output if you put a jubilee clip around that you actually increase the chances of moving the casing ever so slightly and in fact you will cause the fan to hit the edge of the case do not fit a jubilee clip that is another common mistake with all of our jobs done all i'm going to do now is actually turn the unit off the only way you are ever going to turn this unit off is to literally turn that knob until you see the word off and select the off position the fan is actually ramped up it will run cold for a short amount of time and the reason i stress about that switching off procedure is the unit itself has a ramping down procedure so do not ever turn your diesel heater off mid-cycle please ensure that your power supply is sufficient enough to support your diesel heater when these diesel heaters are running sometimes you'll see figures of about 140 watts which is about 12 amps so jackeries the little explorers not going to do it depleted leisure batteries not going to do it on the ramping up cycle and the ramping down cycle these things use quite a bit of power when they're running you can look at using about 30 watts which is basically nothing safety first guys this is a co alarm while you shouldn't be getting products of combustion ever enter your vehicle at the end of the day there is a combustion process going on so why wouldn't you stay safe and fit a co alarm it is recommended by auto term and i do recommend that you should have one of these in your van. This installation is 99.9% .9 complete, but believe me, there is still time to mess this up. If you mount this, the comfort controller, in the incorrect location, your system will cut out long before your van gets to its desired temperature. The consequence of only having a 1.5 meter data cable may encourage you to opt 
to install this on the edge of your seat box. If you install this directly near the heat output of your diesel heater, this will turn off long before your vehicle gets to temperature and you will end up on the phone saying, my van isn't getting warm. Make sure you locate this in a position that is not directly affected by the heat output. Maintenance of the diesel heater. Run the unit once a month for 30 minutes on full power. 